When we look at the white keys of the piano, we can form a whole set of scales. Most of us are familiar with the major and minor scales. Besides these, we have the four main modes, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, and Mixolydian. There's also Locrian, but that's a hot mess that nobody really talks about. In today's video, we're going to focus on the Dorian scale and how we can use its defining notes to add flexible modulations to our pieces. If we take a closer look at the scale itself, we can see that Dorian has the same characteristics as the minor scale, with one difference. The sixth note of Dorian is raised a half step compared to the minor scale. This gives the scale a brighter and, in my opinion, more hopeful sound. Some examples of music that use the Dorian scale are... There are also instances where a piece or song is in a minor scale, but there is some Dorian sprinkled in there. One of my favorite examples of this is the B part of the flying theme from How to Train Your Dragon. The theme is in B minor, but towards the end of the theme, John Powell throws in an E major chord. This E major chord contains a G sharp, which is the raised sixth in B minor. However, both before and immediately after, we hear G major chords. The G major chord is the original sixth degree chord of the B minor scale. The majority of this theme is in B minor and uses B minor chords, but this sudden E major chord opens it up and gives the theme a hopeful ending. It's like Powell has a little taste of Dorian before moving back to the minor key he was originally in. When the sixth note of the minor scale is temporarily raised like this, we call this the Dorian sixth. In the same way, we have the Phrygian second, the Lydian fourth, and the Mixolydian seventh. Oh, and the um, Locrian tritone? Look, we went over this. I don't have time. I'm sorry. So the Dorian sixth is a borrowed note from the Dorian mode into the minor scale. Now let's see how we can use this concept to adopt flexible modulations from a minor key into another key. So this piece I wrote some time ago starts in D minor and later moves to F minor. And I want to show you the part in the end first where we are in F minor. Right before the melody hits, I've used a sequence of chords that includes a Dorian sixth, F minor, E flat major, A flat major, and B flat major. The B flat chord in the end uses the raised sixth of the Dorian scale. After the sequence of chords, the melody is then in F minor. I use both the D flat and the Dorian sixth D in the section that follows, so the Dorian sixth sonority is something that we keep hearing. <laughs> When this melody is first introduced in the opening, I use the same chord sequence in terms of chord functions as in the later F minor part. This time the chords are D minor, C major, F major and G major, where the G is again the chord with the Dorian raised sixth. However, we can also look at these last two chords as being in C minor. In that instance, the chords form a 4-5 sequence, which resolves to C. So in this instance, I use the same chords and the same progression, but now I modulate to C minor from D minor, and the melody continues in C minor. In 
version, the Dorian 6 allows you to either stay in the same key you are in or to move to another one a whole step below. This could be either major or minor, both will work. As long as the last chord of a sequence is the major 4th degree with the raised Dorian 6th, it can function as a 5 in the new key as well. Let's see what kind of use this could have if you're writing music for a game. Say you have a loop and you would like to have some variation or move the melody up or down when you reach a new part of the level, but you don't necessarily want to write a completely new thing. This is where you could choose to have the same loop in two different keys. Writing these loops in Dorian or using the Dorian 6th in a minor key will help you move around these two different keys very easily. I've written a quick section with a short introduction and two different loops. If you want to play around with this yourself, the link to the fmod file I'll show later is in the description. This is where I have placed all the loops and added some logic for transitions so we can try them out and see if they work as intended. The first loop is in C Dorian and the second loop is either in C or B flat Dorian. I end the first loop on a very classic Dorian sound, C minor to F. Now this F is the Dorian chord. This F chord can move back to C minor, staying in the same key we originally were in, or you can choose to use the F chord as a dominant and move away to B flat minor, one whole step below C minor. The two loops are then the same, but in different keys. Now that we have established the move to either C minor or B flat minor, we still somehow need to get back to C minor. In order to be able to move back to C minor or stay in B flat minor, I'd like to keep both options open, I'll need to end both chord progressions on F major so we can move to either key as we did in the end of loop 1. To do this, you'll need to alter the loops in the end so the progression always ends on F major. In this one, I chose to keep the last four chords in both keys the same. With these chord progressions and endings in place, I've now created a loop in two different key signatures that seamlessly move between one another and back to the original loop in C minor. And there you have it, that's how you can use the Dorian 6 to have flexible modulations in your pieces. I hope this helps you in your own writing. If you enjoyed the video, do like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.